Welcome into Update, everyone. I'm Ryan Kruger. First tonight, let's take a look at the latest developments when it comes to the coronavirus. Georgia has now made the call to delay the March 24th primary until May 19th. That decision comes on the heels of Governor Brian Kemp declaring a public health emergency and announcing cases in Georgia nearly doubled overnight. Now the number is 66 in the White House tonight, announcing that President Trump has now tested negative for COVID-19 after he came into contact with others who had tested positive. We're going to have more on all of these stories coming up, but first to another major development tonight. Governor Kemp has now activated the National Guard to help with COVID-19 mitigation and other critical services, and one of those tasks helping transport people home who have been quarantined at the Dobbins Air Reserve Base. That is where we find 11 Alive's Chinu Her live at the base following those latest developments. So Chinu, how many troops are we talking about that are being brought in tonight? Well, Ryan, Governor Kemp is calling up as many as 2,200 troops to help. Now, today he also announced people who were quarantined here at the Dobbins Air Reserve Base can go home. These people were possibly exposed to the coronavirus on a cruise ship. So I've just been going around talking to people. I've been smiling and you know, just kind of being lighthearted. That's how Teresa Duncan Johnson's made the time pass as she sits in quarantine at the Dobbins Air Reserve Base with more than 250 people. They were all on the Grand Princess cruise ship and possibly exposed to COVID-19. On Saturday, Governor Brian Kemp announced those people can now go home. We're going to probably stuff quarantine longer than the 24th because we want to be responsible. We want to be sure we're not infecting other people. And I think that's the general attitude of people that are here. Johnson says she and her husband aren't going home Saturday, but in these pictures she sent us from the base, some people are packed up ready to leave. Governor Kemp is also calling up about 2,200 National Guard troops to help transfer people safely. It's a relief for Johnson, who says it's been up and down at the base because there were times she felt communication wasn't good and there didn't seem to be a clear process. I think it's their learning as each day has gone by, uh, areas that maybe they need to improve on, and then communication is a big part of that. But she says coordinating how people are getting home has been much smoother, and she looks forward to heading back to Augusta. Now, Johnson tells us her and other people who were quarantined here didn't seem to show any symptoms while they were here, but she says it's still important for everyone to be mindful now, even though they're going home, of the people around them and to keep everyone safe. All right, Chinu, her reporting live for us at Dobbins Air, River, Air Reserve Base. Thank you, Chinu. Now, the number of cases in the state jumped to 66 today. That is nearly double what it was yesterday. Right now, most of the cases are in Cobb and Fulton counties, followed by DeKalb and Bartow counties. The state still working tonight to figure out how several of those people were infected. Governor Kemp announced the spike in cases during a press conference this morning when he also declared a public health emergency as the first time that's ever been done in our state. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens spoke one on one with the governor about what that declaration means, along with that jump in cases. Well, the governor used this press conference as a way to practice social distancing by posting it online. The governor also says those numbers will continue to rise as the virus spreads and testing increases. During a live online press weeks, conference, Governor state Kemp states is, this is the largest increase in cases during a 24 hour period. The epidemiologist I met with yesterday and as well as others I've talked to in the past several days, they say that this will you know, grow exponentially. The governor says right now the state is processing about 100 tests a day. Next week, with new equipment and additional staffing, it should go up to 200. To stop the virus from spreading, several schools and daycares will be closed starting this Monday. Visitations are limited at certain health and correctional facilities, Local and the governor is asking all state agencies labs, to telework if possible. Responders. Governor Kemp says you can do your part to help limit exposure. And we are asking people, uh, including religious gatherings, to you know, try to do those online. If you're adamant about holding those services at this point, uh, they certainly can do so, but we're asking them to put in measures like social distancing and other precautions to make sure that people stay safe and don't get infected. Many religious organizations have canceled services for Sunday and plan to live stream them instead. I would suggest that the elderly and medically fragile do not go to large gatherings, try to stay out of public, get your family members, neighbors, and friends to help you get groceries, medications, and those critical things that you need and 
just try to stay at home. In addition to releasing funds to help combat the coronavirus, the declaration of a public health emergency allows for a few other things, like making it easier for oversized vehicles hauling products and emergency equipment to travel throughout the state. It would also allow medical practitioners like nurses who are licensed in other states to temporarily work in Georgia during this pandemic. Governor Kemp also announced the state plans to have drive by testing locations with corporate partners in every Georgia region by the end of next week. Bartow County is one of those counties that saw a major spike in cases overnight, a total of seven now in that county. And among those asked to quarantine members of one particular church, along with anyone who attended two of their gatherings this month. That church we're talking about is at Liberty Square in Cartersville. They will hold online services for the next two weekends after a possible outbreak. The CEO of Cartersville Medical Center tells us they are awaiting test results for 46 people. A good number of those are linked to that church. We're not all from the church, but we have seen a common link uh, with a number of our patients that have come in uh, re regarding the church. Uh, and so that is something that we've identified as an additional risk factor for patients who have come in. Mosley says of the 46 cases under investigation, 19 are being treated at the hospital. The other 27 have been sent home for self quarantine. The church pastor is also asking anyone who attended their gatherings to self isolate and monitor symptoms. New tonight, Georgia's primary, which was set to happen 10 days from now, has now been moved back two months, all due to fears of the coronavirus. Georgia voters will now have to wait until May 19th to vote in the state's presidential primary. State leaders chose that date because it's the same day as a series of local and state primaries. Election officials said they chose to move back the date for the health of election workers and voters. Early voting will also take place closer to May. Now, if you voted early already, your vote will still count. In fact, we're told that the new voting machines can tell if you've already voted early. Therefore, come May, you'll just get a ballot with just the May races on it. Everyone else will get both. The news comes one day after Louisiana chose to postpone its primary until June. Four other states, including Florida, will still hold their primaries this upcoming Tuesday. But after that, there aren't many other primaries on the calendar until May. And there was a proposal earlier this week to allow voters to drop off paper ballots, all in hopes of minimizing contact. But the state elections board chose not to take up that proposal. Tonight, there are more than 2,600 cases of coronavirus in the United States. Nearly every state has at least one confirmed case. 58 people have died so far. Those numbers can sound scary, but the disease is survivable. About 80% of people who get it will only have mild symptoms, thankfully. We know at this point at least 18 patients in the U.S. have recovered, according to NBC News. And new tonight, President Trump's physician announced that the president has tested negative for coronavirus. It's been a week since the president met with a Brazilian official who did test positive for the virus, but the White House says the president is not showing any symptoms. Today, the White House took extra precautions during a press briefing, taking the temperatures of staff and journalists before they were allowed to enter the room. One journalist was turned away. And if you're one of the people wondering how to get tested, the first thing you should do is call your doctor or your local health department. They will be able to determine if you should be tested and to be prioritized for testing at the Georgia Public Health Lab. Patients have to meet the state's criteria, which looks at a combination of symptoms and risk factors. If you don't meet that criteria, you can consider commercial testing. So here's what the process looks like. A patient will be swabbed twice once in the nose, once in the back of the throat. The swabs are then frozen and shipped to either a commercial lab, a CDC lab, or a state health department. Processing for the test takes three to four days before the results are sent to your doctor. 